Hello, welcome. Spoilers, by the way, because I think... Are they gone? Am I, am I free to spoil things? Because I think we have been building up to this section of the story even before the start of Egghead. I'm talking about the Fulalud section of the story. Fulalud has so many things happening with so little answers. And if it wasn't for the start of Egghead, I could see this being placed anywhere. It is simultaneously so disconnected and so connected to the current story. And that is what I find so weird about this. When I started reading Egghead and I was in the early chapters, I decided not to talk about the full lead Kobe kidnap section of the story too much because it didn't really go anywhere at the time. And I had, I had nothing. I still think I have nothing. I don't know why half these characters are doing this stuff. Maybe I'll have something figured out by the end of the arc or by the end of this review. Um, I don't know. Enough of the vague talk. Let's just dive in. Let's talk about the full of lead section of the story. The actual story of Full of Lead feels like, in another timeline, it would be an entire arc within itself. We have the setup with Kobe being kidnapped by Blackbeard and put on Full of Lead. We have the stakes rising with Helmeppa wanting to get him back. And as the arc continues, we slowly get more and more Marines joining in on the fight. Why? To get back Kobe. He's like the perfect protagonist to rescue. Right? Like in another timeline, this is like the Marine Ford of the Marines, if that makes sense. Not only does it feel like an entire side story that is outside of the eyes of the main cast, but it really feels like it has its own depth by having its own cast and so many new faces from the Marines stepping in to help save Kobe. And then on the other side, you got so many faces on full of lead trying to stop them, like, like the giant skull coming to life, making this island feel like a giant Chekhov's gun. The fact that we're controlling like the giant skull on full of lead feels like, oh, we've just been planning this for a while. Oh, it's gorgeous. We also have Kuz on here, which like we've had him around, but we never knew why. And in this section of Full of Lead, we see him bonding with Blackbeard. We still don't really know why he's teaming up with Blackbeard for sure. And I don't think Kuzan and Blackbeard fully care, quote unquote, about each other. But Blackbeard simply says, we don't have to. We don't have to care about each other. We just got to share similar goals. I help you accomplish your dream. You help me accomplish mine. That's why everyone joined Blackbeard. And in that sense, it feels eerily similar to Luffy's philosophy. Like, I help you accomplish your dreams, you help me accomplish mine. But there's subtext. There's like a layer of obscurity in their approaches that makes it feel slightly twisted um, in a way that I can't fully articulate. If I had to guess why Kuzan at all stepped away from the Marines and joined Blackbeard, it would be to purposefully sabotage or destroy the Marines. When Kuzan and Akainu fought, the amount of trust and damage, the worry for the future of what the Marines would become, and the potential to take it all down might have been enough of a reason for Kuzan given his seemingly wavering faith in the Marines throughout this entire series. One of the things that I wasn't really expecting from Egghead, but something that we've got multiple times throughout Egghead, was the amount of allies turned enemies. Personally, I love this so much. Every fight feels conflicted. Characters are simultaneously looking up to the person they're beating down. They are thankful for being able to teach a student that they are now killing. When Garp arrived on Full of Lead, I didn't really plan for him and Kuzan to have any moment with each other. Like, sure, I knew Kuzan was going to be there and that he was a part of Blackbeard's team, but it's been really difficult for me to fully understand what Kuzan's motivations are. That's how I felt since like his introduction with Robin. He's always felt like a walking contradiction to me now more than ever. So when Kuzan and Garp started fighting, the scale of the fight didn't really register until Kuzan started throwing out like really big moves, freezing giant sections of the map, Garp jumping in with galaxy impact, destroying like chunks of the island. And so while reading, I thought, okay, Garp is going to go in there him and Kuzan are going to clash, and then Garp is going to get Kobe, and then the Marines are going to leave. Kuzan might try to stop him, but like ultimately he's going to be like, no, nah, I can't, I'll let him go, or something like that. But I was not expecting this fight to turn into something more tragic than that. Garp had trained Kuzan to fight 
making him one of his pupils like he did with Kobe, only for Kuzan to turn to the other side for some unknown reason that Garp is maybe aware of, maybe he's not, and I'm not sure what option would feel better in this scenario. So the brawl between Kuzan and Garp is one full of a variety of contradictory emotions stirring up that same betrayal and wavering faith that both of them must feel by now. It makes me wonder if Kuzan in this fight was aware going into it that he was going to kill Garp, or if Garp was at all aware or prepared going into it that he was gonna die. Because I think Garp, for a while, has wanted Kobe to become his successor. Similarly to other characters wanting the newer generations to be the answer, I think Garp has been training Kobe in all the same ways. He was making him strong. Kobe has the honesty impact, which mimics Garp's impact. Garp similarly was pushing Kobe to be that answer, even if Garp wouldn't be there to see it happen. So I don't know if Garp was mentally prepared to sacrifice himself, but I think he was. When fighting on Full Oled, Garp seemingly sacrifices himself on multiple occasions. He does it first when getting stabbed by Kuzan. He then stalls so that Kobe and the crew can escape. He laughs, seemingly knowing he has one foot in the grave. Like, like, like that's now a clear, I'm gonna die here, Mark. And I've been coping too much, pretending that Garp is gonna be fine. But like, maybe this is where he dies. Maybe that's it for him. I don't know if we're gonna see more Garp. I don't know if this is gonna be his last moments on screen. Uh, I don't think they will. But the whole world considers him missing in action, and I love that everyone from like East Blue is talking about Garp and Luffy right now. So maybe we'll cut to the Marines to see the aftermath of this. Maybe we'll get like one final cut back to Dodon after this, just for some closure after the events of Full of Lead. So recently, the anime released two episodes of the fight between Garp and Kuzan in Full of Lead, and I think it is beautiful and interesting, and I have just finished watching those. Something that the anime gives a lot more of is time. Time to see Kuzan and Garp hanging out, talking, sharing their grievances. In these scenes, they are so adorably animated. They're just like goofy little guys. And it gives us a lot more time to get invested into this relationship that'll eventually coincide with a fight. We get to see Kuzan uncertain in his place after the events of Ohara, which relates to Egghead, but also shows us one of the reasons why he left the Marines. We see Garp, mad about Sabo, joining the Revolutionary Army, and then mad about Luffy, still wanting to become a pirate. And again, they share so many of their grievances and enjoyments together, all of which uh, culminates in them trading blows, which I love how much drama, how much, how much like emotion we're able to suck out of a punch. It is not just an exchange in blows, but rather an entire like a dialogue that happens between these characters. And I find that beautiful. As they go to punch each other, we see previous versions of themselves in each other's eyes. As the punch connects, we get an impact frame of a single moment of kinship before we cut back to the mix of emotions that were packed into a single punch. We get a lot more impact frames showing what appears to be not like a sad reaction, like not a reaction of physical pain, but more of emotional pain, like shock, regret, sadness. And as they fly back, we get a glimpse of Kuzan's face. He can't obscure his emotions behind those glasses. We also get Garp, who we see react in an almost like proud, accepting nature for his past pupil before they get launched and fall into a pose that is more uh, typical of remorse, sadness, regret. And I think the second episode really did answer some of the questions that I had around Garp's willingness to die for Kobe. At the start, he asked, what did you guys join the Navy to save? And for him, it's the future. Throughout the story, we've constantly been told about inherited will and the limitless potential of future generations to do what the previous ones have been unable to do. And I didn't really understand how set on this philosophy Garp was until I watched these episodes. Again, even the mentality around what Garp did 
feels like it has so many parallels to Marine Ford, and it just feels like such a tightly written, isolated section in this much bigger story of Egghead. I think I think it's beautiful, almost as beautiful as um, you. <laughs> Sorry, this took a while. Thank you, patrons. I've been punching a boat.